feedback too. All right. We are live we here are live. in Lakeland, Florida, the hub of the world. Lakeland, Florida. Mark Batterson just came here to Lakeland, Florida, so it's got to be the hub. But uh, we're excited. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I should have done radio. I could have done well, I think. Or, or, uh, or not. But um, anyways, we're excited. We had a great week. Oh and I, here's, here's the one thing and one thing only I want to share tonight before I hand it off to Chris. It's really interesting. Sometimes Chris has things on her heart and sometimes <laughs> I do. And sometimes neither, neither of us do. And we just act like we know. Talking about seafood and seafood. food trends. But I, I do really believe this. And I'm <laughs> speaking from the bottom of my heart is that I have sensed a big shift happening mm -hmm. in ourselves, on our team mm -hmm. over the last couple of weeks. And part of it, I feel like there's a maturity taking place in our team, which is pretty interesting because it's, it's really easy to be excited when you're adding a ton of people and there's a lot of growth and you're breaking new pins and silvers are coming and everything's, you know, going gangbusters. Of course, why wouldn't you be excited? But when things aren't going as quick as they, they were at one time, that's the character area where you can kind of start to, God starts to take you through the refiner's fire and says, okay, here's, here's time to uh, chip off a little bit of this, chip off a little bit of that, mold you a little bit more in my image and get you prepared for what is to come. And I really believe from the bottom of my heart that that's where we're at as a team. I mean, I've never, I said this at the beginning of, of September, but I'm really, I've never been so excited for this <laughs> business. And here's why is that I'm starting to learn myself and how to build how I work best on building this business and one thing I realized and, and this could be like literally taking a gun out and shoot myself in the foot right now but I'm just going to say it is that one thing I learned realized after the last 30 days of the 531 accountability team it was really cool for a little bit of time for me but then it became a drudgery monotonous mess for me and, I, and let me explain that and unpack why is because I didn't get in this business to have another boss. And all of a sudden I became my own boss and I felt like I had to check in every day to myself just <laughs> to be accountable to something I started. <laughs> and, um, and so in, in the essence of five, three, one, I think it's great and it works really well for some people. And some of you need to have that accountability to say, okay, I need someone that I'm accountable to that I'm going to check in every day mm -hmm. if that's your personality. And, mm -hmm. And Bridget Ryan and, and um, uh, Amy Paul are phenomenal at that. And that's just their network. That's, that's, the, that's the way they run. And that's the way that their, their, their team is growing. However, for me and, I, and, and for Krista, we operate really different. Like if, if I'm not flowing in the Holy Spirit, if I'm not led by what the Spirit of God is telling me to do, I am like so empty inside. I am so, uh, it's just like, it's not working. And so here I was, my, my main kind of mojo is flowing in the Holy Spirit and just going where God's leading me and seeing what I feel God's called me to speak. And all of a sudden, I'm kind of forcing myself to do these messages to put my name on the board so that you guys didn't think I was an idiot for starting a group that I couldn't even complete. So here's 100% transparency. transparency for you. So by the end of it, by day 30, I kid you not, I was like, I cannot wait till this month ends because I was just done with my own group that I started. How dumb is that? But here's the deal that I, here's what I realized in the process is that you got to find what God's called you to do and how God's called you to build this business. And if you try to operate outside of that, you're going to be frustrated. You're not going to produce fruit and it's going to end up just frustrating your family those around you, your business partners. And so, you know, hey, I apologize that, that I took you guys through that mess so you can learn, so I can learn my deal. But I did. But like you said, for some, it's good. Like Chad's such a self-starter anyway. So even beyond the spirit-led part, you're such a self-motivated self-starter. Um, but there are some that do thrive on it. So if that's. Right. That's yeah. What, and that's what I'm saying is that you got to find your mode. So it's not and, and wrong. What, it's just kind of figuring yeah, it out. Like, I mean, Bridget Ryan and, and Amy Paul, I mean, they're the top, they're on the leaderboard every week. And that's what they, I mean, on their team pages, you know, that's all they're talking about, 531. And that's cool. And not, we're not dismissing that. I'm not dismissing that because today I, I contacted more than five people today, but it was in a different spirit. It was, okay, I'm going to pray about how I'm going to reach out to this person, 
and I'm going to let God communicate a message that's going to touch their heart. And from that, fruit's going to come. And that's what happened. Uh, I, I posted that message earlier today that, you know, that, that little two, three sentence uh, uh, post that I had a couple days ago was like, hey, we're looking for some people that would, would uh, uh, try out Slim for 30 days. I've said that a thousand different ways <laughs> for the last year and a half. But on that day, I said it that way. 30-day challenge. 30-day challenge. And Couldn't I, believe it. And all of a sudden, the feed blew up. Yeah. We gained, gained three new customers. I still have more people I'm talking to, a new ambassador. Mm -hmm. It was just because that I listened to what God was speaking for me to say, and I posted it, and then I followed up with those people. So the moral of the story is this. Listen to Chris. Don't listen to chat. No, listen to what God has called you to do and don't try to put yourself in a box just to fulfill some obligation. You know, our, when we first, our very first meeting, I said that the hallmark of the dairy team is going to be that we are going to be led by the spirit of God. And if we ever get out of that, then we're off track. And so mm -hmm. um, you got to find your, your groove and your groove may be, Hey, I need to, tell someone every day, my upline, my sponsor that I did five, three, one. And if that's your groove, go after it and do it. Because sometimes like if you haven't been self-employed before, um, you probably, you might need that. Right. You might need someone to be accountable to. Right. If you've been self-employed like me multiple times, I don't want that. I, <laughs> I want the freedom and I want to be able to build the business how I want to build it without that. So anyways, I just want to share that with you and be transparent about that little five, three, one group. And like I said, by no means am I saying that you don't go out and set one up on your own team sometime. You just got to find out what God's called you to do and how yeah. to do it and then run with that. Yeah. And what's beautiful is we have an upline diamond who leads the same way. Um, so she had opened up a training um, coaching like thread with Chad and I and with our sponsor, Heather, which has been so special just to have even more hands-on coaching on a week by week basis and kind of laying out, here's our team. Here's what the last couple months have been like, here's our goals. Um, and here's how, what we're learning about ourselves in this process. And that was actually part of the conversation because um, she also created an accountability. You guys are welcome on this, right? Are she still adding or was it closed? Is it closed close. now? I, I know there's a number of team members on there. The Maui group. Um, is that what you're talking about? It's closed? Yeah, okay. it's closed. Just kidding. But I know some of y'all are on there. <laughs> um, but uh, she had asked basically like, what, what are you going to be doing and what are you going to be held accountable to? My personality, I like... I start flubbing over my words and I freeze. I like hit panic mode and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. A mental block. I have no idea because so much of what I've done has just kind of flowed. Cause there's some days that I have time to throw out a ton of messages. And then there's other days that my messages are done. Will I change a poopy diaper and I hit that red record button and I'm just like scrambling. Right. There's kind of this ebb and flow to my life. That's part of front the beauty of this business is you kind of fit it into the nooks and crannies. Um, and I could tell back when I had done accountability before that if I had to message a certain amount of people a day, that my messages lost effectiveness because the people became a number instead of a person. And that's, so that's like the balance because you do want to be consistent. That's a key, right? but you also don't want to lose the heart of what you're doing and the heartbeat of it and the joy of doing it of, um, of really recognizing these people for who they are. Cause I refuse to be a copy and paster and send a basic script. And, you know, I think you can read those, but you can just tell before you even open it, like, Oh, it's a copy and paste MLM message, you know? Um, so it was fun telling her kind of my journey and just being transparent that I'm not sure what to be accountable to you on quite yet. Um, I know some areas I need to work on, one of which is um, helping and coaching all y'all, especially on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, but it was beautiful hearing back from her and say, Krista, do what's working. Um, and, and you guys are, you, you're, you know how to kind of flow in that. But if you don't yet know how to do it, and 531 is how you operate, don't kick yourself there either. You know, I don't want you also feeling so much pressure that I need to hear from God about what to <laughs> post today because then you can also get locked up. There's yeah. days where it's inspired and I know what I'm supposed to write and there's days that I just know that people need to know my business is open 
And I might pull up a save post that I've saved from someone else, you know, and kind of make it my own or um, do a product post or whatever. So also don't get locked up on that end if you feel like, you know, heaven's not opening up an angel singing <laughs> of what you should be posting that day or how to message a person. I don't want to like overcomplicate it. It's the most simple business out there. You literally share your passion. Like you just, that's what you do. And you sign them up. I mean, it's, that's how simple this is. Someone messaged me today asking about our compensation plan and uh, more details. And I was like, well, you're welcome to call Chad. He might be able to help you more. Here's a great video. And I'm just going to be transparent with you. I get paid five times a month. It's double what Chad's income used to be. And what I do is I share my heart and it grows. Um, and it's working, you know, I'm just thankful money comes. I, I don't care about the numbers. I don't care about every single ingredient. Um, but that's just my heartbeat and kind of our journey and, and learning to just kind of own that. But that's okay because there's others that specialize in knowing all of the ingredients. And so we can use their videos, praise God. Mm -hmm. And there's others that specialize in knowing all of the numbers and the compensation plan. So find your niche and celebrate what you're good at. Celebrate your giftings and don't beat yourself up about what's not coming as easy. Um, keep flowing in what's coming easy to you and in that grace. This has been the most interesting meeting. This is so not what we had planned. Anywho, um, beyond that, what time is it? <laughs> We're going to draw names or a name. I wish it was names. That'd be cool. I have no time. I have no clock or anything. So I don't know if it's just time just to draw the name for a purse. Right. Yes. Um, so this morning I had my kids um, write down the verse from Psalm 138. I don't even have my notebook. Um, that God will, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. So I told each of them to write out that verse. And then down below that, just write down everything that comes to their heart that's concerning them right now. And for me, I allowed myself to do the same thing. And so some of it had to do with Judah, um, another one of our children that we've had a great week with. Um, High schooler. <laughs> um, shoot. Um, even our business and some of the concerns that I realized, wow, I'm kind of carrying this on me. Um, the next couple of months and figuring out just details with traveling and leaving seven children home. We haven't done that ever. Um, so all these things and we're jotting it all down and I was having them each kind of share. Um, and then we were talking about how I just had them, you know, put their hands out. And we're praying together and just to release those concerns because God's already perfecting these things and you carrying on those concerns and those fears or, or whatever, isn't going to make them, you know, come together. That, that doesn't fulfill anything. That doesn't work, right? But one of their um, topics that came up, I'm going to get emotional. Shoot, you guys. And it has to do with our journey, but it relates to our business too, and it relates to the maturity that Chad was talking about. So the kids were just sharing that one of their concerns that's hard is they don't understand why Judah's not healed because they believe in healing. Of course we do. It's all over the word, and we've seen it in real life. And we, they've prayed for it. These kids are consistently standing on the word for Judah's healing, right? And so um, just talking transparently about what that does and how it can affect your faith a bit when you're not seeing it and the journey is getting longer and longer. And we were talking about the difference between like healing and a creative miracle, how Judah's not sick. Um, in fact, he's probably one of the healthiest kids in our family. This kid has never had sugar. He just has these vegetables and clean proteins and explain to them he's, he doesn't have an illness. He doesn't have a disease. But he does need a creative miracle. It would be the equivalent of someone needing to grow out a new arm. He would need a new brain. Um, or for what the parts that he has to just work in a crazy, amazing way. And um, so I was walking them through just my own journey and a pivotal point in that journey because – for too long, years worth. Um, when you're believing for something and you don't see it, it's easy to get mad or it's easy to get angry, you know, or question God or question his goodness or it's hard to trust him because it's just right in your face, especially with a child. It's there, right? He's right there every day. And here we were studying the word even more. And in the beginning, especially just like, give me every healing book, every healing scripture. Like we are taking this on um, as if we could fulfill it on our own strength. Um, 
but I did. I felt, I felt uh, for the bait of I'm praying for this and it's not happening and I'm mad and God, this is hard and I don't trust you. And like, how do I believe for anything else then? And what, like, I just, I just, everything was swirling around and a defining moment came of just getting real with myself. Like I got to get over this. This isn't working. Um, I either have to just choose to just pursue God with passion and um, his presence and either healing is what's most important to me or back with our finance, financial mess. Is it prosperity and healing? Is that why I serve God or am I serving God? And that's what my focus has to be. And I have to like lay this at his feet because I know that he heals. So God, here's my son. And even if the worst thing were to happen, or even if we have to walk, if Satan ends up attacking in another way, or, you know, these trials come from different things. One, we live in a fallen world. Two, we have a real enemy that seeks to kill and destroy. And three, sometimes we just make dumb mistakes. Okay. So any bad thing falls in those categories. I tell my kids, if it wasn't in the garden of Eden and it's not in heaven, it's not from God. So it's easy to kind of separate it. So I'm not guaranteed that there won't be another trial. Um, and I also don't want it to feel like a rug is swept from underneath me like it did with Judah. It caught me by surprise. It swept me off my feet and knocked me over real bad because um, I was kind of on this high of, with God, you've got it all. You know, we've got all these promises in the word, and we do. And in my mind, I was thinking, no more trials then. Like, it's heaven on earth, <laughs> and I never have to go through anything again. So I had to come to a point of, am I willing to serve him passionately no matter what? Um, if even the worst thing happened, will I still serve him? And I let myself go down that path mentally, briefly, of what would be the worst thing that could happen to me or to Judah. And in that moment, could I still serve him? You bet. Because if the worst thing that could happen meant he was in heaven, that's a really good victory. That's not what I'm believing for. But I had to let myself go there to realize that no matter what, I could serve him. And that it's not going to be based on what I see with my eyes. And once I made that shift and just laid him there with the Lord, I could then understand and enjoy that in between. You guys probably saw that post. It's kind of just been what's stirring in me. Because I think I was so focused on when my life's perfect again, if I could just get my son healed and some money back in this bank account, then everything's going to be right. And that was so wrong. And my kids, I think it's easy for them to think that, that if Judah could just be healed, then we could have our parents' attention again. Um, then it'd be easier to go to the grocery store, go to restaurants, or we could do all these things again and be easier. But what if I just know that God's got Judah taken care of, and I don't know the timing or what that looks like. And so how about in the meantime, I embrace this journey with everything I've got. What about if instead of like, waking up each day like, oh my gosh, I've got to serve this kid again and spoon feed him and change his nasty diapers and give him the medication and take him to a special needs school, which talk about hitting your circumstances right in your face. Some of these children that we're seeing, um, what if I just take this and, and embrace this in between time and embrace that I get to learn how to serve in an amazing way, that I get to learn how to love in a way I've never learned before. That I get to learn how to love someone that can't quite give it back the way my other kids can. What if I just embrace the character that's being formed in us and the patience that's being formed in this journey? It changes everything. Everything. It changes how I look at Judah. It changes how I look at the circumstances. And I obviously am not going to like celebrate a trial like, thanks Satan for attacking our family. But I have this stubborn side that's like, I'll make him wish he never messed with us because I know it wasn't an attack just on Judah. It was an attack on our family. That's kind of a big thing, but you can still apply it to your journey here. What if you never do hit diamond? What if you don't hit emerald? Or what if it's just not in the time span that you want it to happen? That's happened to Chad and I. You guys have been with us. You know that May was the first month that we thought, we got this. We can do it. We're going to go Emerald. Okay, maybe in June. <laughs> maybe in July. And here we just finished September. We haven't reached it yet. 
you guys have been a part of it. We know what it feels like. We know that the last two months haven't been our like most amazing months and that that's been across the board. Even Amy Paul was like, oh, September was miserable. She broke a diamond on her team, <laughs> but their sponsoring rate was horrible. So know that you're not alone. If you're like, Holly, I thought I was going to be in a different place by now. But what if your perspective is taken off of all of that, just like we had to take it off of Judah's healing, not off of it. Obviously, I don't know. I'm hoping I'm wording that right. But what if instead it's like, God, I'm going to do what you're telling me to do, no matter the results. I'm going to do what you say to do, whether I end up sponsoring one this month or 10, whether I end up hitting a new rank this month or I end up hitting it six months from now. And then what if we take on each day embracing this journey? So if it's not going quite as planned, saying, okay, this is awesome. I have never been able to, to, <laughs> to develop patience this way ever. <laughs> this is so great. I have never been able to develop my personal character. I've never been able to develop my leadership skills to this capacity. I've never really had to work on being positive and having a positive mental attitude no matter the circumstances. This is an amazing journey that I get to embrace this and learn this. What if we take it on that way and our eyes are off the ranks and off the timeline and we just do what God's saying to do? And then what if we take on each day? as if that one day determines exactly like, what if God said, how you build this business tomorrow determines like your rest of your future? How would you tackle it? Or like if I was to say, hey guys, for 24 hours, Chad and I are not only gonna pay the $35 sign up, we're gonna pay for their welcome pack as well. How many people do you think you'd reach out to? And how much excitement would be in your voice message? Like, guys, you can join for free. Like, get on board. You'd go to town, right? You'd message 100 people. But why do we wait for a promo to have that kind of tenacity? Like, why do we wait for, okay, like, pretty soon, maybe Plexus will throw out another sale, and then I'll add 10 people. Or uh, maybe Chad and Crystal will have one. Or we'll, we'll do it on the info page. And then on those days, we make these sprints, right? But really, we have something so exciting on our hands every single other day. It's just a matter of deciding in our hearts, today I'm going to give it everything I have. And it might be 10 minutes one day. It might be an hour the next. But going into it with this focused, intentional effort of, God, thank you for what you've given me. My eyes are on you and on what you're telling me to do. And the results are in your hand. And I think there's going to be a freedom and a maturity, like Chad was just saying, that's unlike anything else and that prepares us for the team that is to come. Leadership doesn't just happen overnight. You don't just begin leading thousands um, in a couple of months. And I think so often some do join multi-level marketing, kind of like, well, let's kind of see what happens. But if you do that and it doesn't happen in that time span, you lose that fervor, right? So you have to be grounded in a foundation of what is the Lord leading me to do? What does he put in my hands to do? It doesn't mean every day is easy. It doesn't mean customer service calls <laughs> aren't going to happen. There is going to be stuff along the way, but it's simple and it's fulfilling and it's working. And the time that he brought you to this opportunity couldn't be better. And I do believe, just like Chad said, October and November especially, I really think is going to be completely different. We're seeing a surge of momentum. Um, and so I can't wait to see what happens. I know for us, we, our goal this month is to add 100 to this team. We've done it before, and we're going to do it again. Add 100 people to this team um, and get Emerald done so that Mama's not driving a stunt vehicle <laughs> that smokes. <laughs> no, no, but, but truly, we, we're ready. I know y'all are ready, too. August and September are behind us, and let's move into this with that balance and perspective like we've never had before. That's great. Good stuff. I just believe this is that, you know, what God directs you to, he's going to, you know, guide you through. So, you know, just hold on to that. And, <clears throat> you know, just imagine this, this is going to sound really crazy, but just imagine this <laughs> is that, and this is probably a, a, a bad example, <laughs> but I'm going to use it. Anyways. How crazy are we going? But um, just imagine if every morning I woke up and I said, has God called me to really be married to you? Oh my gosh, it is a bad example. And then, and then I go and I like, okay, our marriage is good. Our marriage is good today. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a second. I had a bad day. You didn't, you didn't make me with the right food. I don't know. Is this really the marriage I'm supposed to have? 
Okay. Oh, oh, she made me dessert good. Okay. All right. We're back on track now. Okay. Okay. She cleaned the toilets. Fantastic. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. So I feel like sometimes we go through this roller coaster and sometimes we Which love we've experienced first plexus. Time. I mean, this yeah. is, yes, I love plexus. Look at my shirt, my hat, bling, woo, what? And then other times it's like, you know, I don't want anything to do with this. And I, I just really believe this is that, you know, for where my heart is steadfast is that if God leads you to do something with this business, whatever that something is, I, I'm not, I'm not going to put a stamp on it that says you're a diamond, you know, it could be an emerald, it could be a ruby, whatever it is. But if God's called you to do it, you can't wake up tomorrow and say, do you still want me to do it? God's going to move the cloud, lift the cloud when he wants to lift the cloud and there will not be a grace. There won't be a peace and there'll be something else that God has for you to do if that's his will. Mm -hmm. But until that time comes until he, you know, lifts that grace and lifting that grace doesn't just mean that I can't register anyone this month or I didn't get any new customers. No, that's just work. Okay. Lifting in grace means God spoke to me and this season's over. So just make sure you can, you know that. And otherwise, if he hasn't told you that, forge ahead and move forward, keep going, be married to what he's given you and love, love that one every single day with all you got, you know? And I, I really believe that God then can bless you. We, we had a conversation with my son just last um, couple of days ago. We had a lot of conversations, but one of the conversations <laughs> that we had was um, he was supposed to be washing our car. and um, Instead, he decided to 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 do. Um, one of our friends came. One of his friends came over with uh, you, you know those little snakes that you light on fire, a little firework. Anyway, it's just a little firework, and and they they decided to do it on our front porch. Well, that was fantastic because it left a nice little black mark on our front porch. Um, and, and and Josiah said to me, he goes, "Well, Dad, you know, we're we're renting this house anyways. I mean, we're going to get a new house." And I stopped him so cold in his tracks. I said, you know what? God will never bless you beyond what he's already given you. And if you can't own it, what he's given you right now, and if you can't be a good steward of what he's given you, do you think he's going to give us anything else? Do you think he's going to give you a bigger house, a bigger blessing, if you can't even be a blessing with the one he's given you right now? Mm-hmm. And, and so I just encourage you to you know, knock off the rent mentality of Plexus and, and just own it, own it, and, and say, this is mine. This is what God's led me to do. And those blessings will continue to unfold, whether it's in plexus, or maybe you just say, you know what, man, you know, um, it's been six months in plexus. I haven't hit the goal I thought I would be with. Man, my marriage is stronger. Man, there's goals on on our dream board again. And my kids see that mom and dad are speaking positive. Hey, mom's dad, they're reading books again to get, you know, pause and get their heart right. Wow, mom and dad are speaking better, you know, and those, those are, you can't put a price tag on those things. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you, you see uh, Denny's message, which I still got to get that cut down and sliced up. Denny's message that he gave a few weeks back. I know. What's up? Sorry, bro. <laughs> but, I mean, you can't put a price tag on what Denny was talking about a few weeks ago and, and the change of his heart and how he responds better to his family and all that stuff. I mean, I, I literally would build a Plexus business for a year and a half to hear his story. Mm-hmm. I would. There's no question about it. If, if we didn't make a nickel, and I was just building the business to find a Denny and he told me that his marriage is better and his, his relationship with his kids better. Is that good enough for me? Absolutely. So just know that, that there might be little nuggets like that, that God will lead you to. So anything else that you have? Mm-hmm. So on my wall here to the left, I have typed up um, different words. And we all know, even just from our prayer times, one of the ways that kind of Chad, I think one of his giftings from the Lord is, just the way God will speak and move on him when he's praying. And so there's been certain, um, certain words that we've typed up that kind of came from the Lord in those times. And I'm going to read it to you because I think it's not just for me and it wasn't just for Chad and I. It says, don't draw back. Now's the time to see what I can do. Do you not see, do you not taste the goodness that I have prepared for you? If you could do all this on your own, what would be my part? And where is the testimony? Do everything that you can do, and then let me step in. Let me show you how I can do more in a moment than you can in a day. My grace will multiply your efforts. 
Yes, it will be hard. Yes, it will be work. But then there's this supernatural grace that explodes on the scene and takes over. It moves the hearts of men and women. It lifts up heavy boulders and puts them in their right place. Now go back and put your hand on this list of yours. Right now, go back and do this, I tell you. Pray over this list right now and call from the cistern of life, from the deep wells of your spirit. Cry out to me. This is more about me than it is about you. This is a platform, my daughter. This is not about you, but it's about me. I use platforms, voices, people. Now watch and now expect. Now hope, now believe. Now craft and create messages from the spirit. Do not routinely go through this. Do not cut and paste. Every heart, every person is unique. The overflow will spill into your words. And then rest, rest in me, rest in this word. Rest in my confidence, not yours. You do what you can do and I will do the rest. <laughs> so for some of you, if you haven't just been there before, you know, God, God speaks a lot of different ways. And one of the ways that he speaks through me is through, through words. And so I'll just start praying. And sometimes I just know that's not a Chad prayer that's coming <laughs> out of my mouth. That's, that's, that's God speaking. And so that was a word as Krista said for her, but I believe it's for now, even as I, I was hearing it, I was like, wow, that's, that's penetrating my heart. That's touching my heart. So that word's alive. It's a rhema word. And I believe own that word for you. And if any of you guys want, want that, you know, just message us and we'll, we'll shoot it over to you in a message, but I really believe that it's for you. So yeah. Switch cool. gears again. <laughs> let's, let's do this. Let's, let's do this first. I don't want to lose the, the spirit of what we have. I'm going to pray first to wrap up tonight, but then afterwards we're going to come back and do the drive. <laughs> because God's given me a picture for tonight. And I mm -hmm. believe that there's some people on here tonight that weren't expecting to be here, weren't planning on being here. And I'm primarily, uh, I can't even see who you are. So don't think I'm singling you up. But primarily, I think there might even be some people on a, um, on a live feed tonight that we just happen to throw up at the last moment. So we're going to pray and uh, just hang tight because we got the purse giveaway afterwards. Okay, so Father God, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together as a group, as a team. I thank you, Lord, for these friends and families that are represented here tonight. I thank you, Lord, for these boys and girls. I just love seeing uh, Denny with his kids crawling all over him. It's just a blessing to me, and I just thank you, Lord, for you know what you're doing in the hearts of men and women here. And Father God, as I, as we were talking, and I just pictured this this pathway and I just pictured that somebody has been going through this season in their life where they're they thought they're going down the right path and they're going really far down this path and all of a sudden without them even knowing this path circles around and comes back to almost halfway or right to where you started and you're like how did I get here I thought that I had gone so much further and now I'm right back to where I started. And there's a frustration. There's a helplessness. There's a hopelessness. There's a desperation. And I could be talking about plexus or I could be talking about your relationship with the Lord. You might be in a place where, you know, you really felt like you're a lot further. And now you look back at your relationship with God and it's just empty and it's stale and it's dead and it's dry. And you never thought you'd be where you're at, but you're here and you, you're starting to live the life that you never expected that you'd live. And so if I'm speaking to you tonight, I just really believe that God kind of put a pause in the action tonight of your life to beckon you and your heart to come back running to him. And I do know this is that if God's calling you tonight, that he's calling you to make a move. He wants you to return back to the path that he has for you. And there's going to be an alternate path. There's going to be an alternate way to go. But I really believe it starts back at centering your life with him. So whoever you are, and this could be just for one person, if tonight's the night where you feel like your relationship with the Lord is south, if you feel like tonight, God forbid, if anything happened, you're driving down the road tomorrow and you get hit, and life's over, you're, you're, there's a question mark of where you would go, or you didn't have the full confidence, or you use a term now that says, well, I was a good person, but there isn't that confidence of a relationship with Christ. If that's you tonight, 
I have the confidence to believe that God put you on this call to change the course of eternity. So if that's you, I want you to either do one of two things. Just go ahead and be bold enough to throw it down in a note, in a message right now. Private message me or message me later. I'm going to personally help and walk you through this season of your life if you need that help. If it's one, two, three, five, I don't care. But I do know that this is that when God gives you an open door, you better run through that door because those doors don't always happen. God, yes, God beckons us and calls us and cries out to us. But if he sees that you're continually shunning him and shutting the door, that's going to become dissipated and less loud. It's going to be quiet. And eventually you're not going to hear it all. So for that one person, that, that's my prayer. I thank you, Father God, for this time tonight. I thank you, Lord, for just amazing platform that you've given us to speak life and hope into people that this silly little pink drink could be used as a platform to touch families' lives, to get people dreaming again, to get health restored, to get marriages back on track. And let us not disdain or forget the beginnings that you give us. Lord, what may seem like a long time for us, maybe oh, I've been doing this for a month, a year, a year and a half, whatever that number is, and it hasn't happened. In eternity, that's just, it's just a snap. And for you, it's just a snap. But he does want us to be stewards of the things and the gifts that he's given us. And are we going to tail back and go the other direction once a little trial hits? Are we going to stand firm and say, you know what, Lord, yep, if this is what you have for me, I'm going to follow your lead and I'll do this day in and day out with time slots that I have and that you give me with or without fruit. And I just know, Lord, you're doing something that I can't see. So we just love you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for what's to come. I just thank you, Lord, for awesome leaders. I thank you, Lord, for Jetty and Lori. I thank you, Lord, that you've brought their business to a place of their diamonds in this business, touching thousands and thousands of people, not just on our team, but throughout the whole world of Plexus and beyond. And I just ask you, Lord, tonight, wherever they're at, that you just bless them, that you continue just to sow into them, that you continue to open up new opportunities and doorways for them. And I just thank you, Lord, for the mentors that we have here uh, in this business. Thank you, Lord, for all these people that came on tonight and your precious spirit that is just hovering over this place. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. So, uh, yeah, switching gears. But before I switch gears, I just, I, you know, I just do know this, is that um, it's loud and clear what's in my head. And so I hope and pray that you respond tonight and did respond. So, But um, we did have a fun, fun little <laughs> contest. Right? Yes, and so many names that I was entering. So there's a lot of names. <laughs> there's a lot of entries. Some of y'all with like 15 entries and 18 entries. And so how much does this purse retail for? 250 or so, 240. So, so it retails for 250 dollars. And if we don't tell them, we could just say that we bought it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I told them I got out on. We sale. got a good deal. We got it. We. we I love a good sale. So the girls. I went trash dump diving and found it. No, those days are over. <laughs> Been there, done that. Okay. I actually did that, though. We have done Every that Every Sunday with the kids. Yep, it was a family event. <laughs> coupons. When they were young shit. enough to know that that wasn't cool, because they told you that was so fun. And then yes, I, Can we do it again? Oh, yes, we can. Yes. Every Sunday. And you can watch a movie while you cut coupons. <laughs> okay, so the girls were precious. Actually, coupons got brought up, because it's been so long since they helped me cut stuff. So they were helping me cut three pages worth of names. Um, it's more personal if I like write the names than if I entered on my computer. So we are sitting at ballet in between classes and I'd write them down. And then we were like, what do we put them in? So I dumped my little lipstick pouch into my purse and we started sticking all these names in. So what kind of purse is this? Michael Kors. So who is Michael Kors? I have no clue. Uh, okay. Someday I'm going to learn all this stuff. Diane, who's really Michael Kors? <laughs> Denny is not Michael Kors. Sorry. <laughs> Gotta find a good good way to ship it. Well, it was established in 19... I'm so nervous to draw a name. Here, you. Uh, I'll just keep shaking. We really want the right My person. heart is like racing. 
Okay, so okay. they're all in here. Do you see all these here? I'm gunning for you, Danny. Michael, <laughs> you guys, both you guys. Have a, this, this will be your Christmas present. Do it one. I can't breathe. Right, the writing's really sloppy. I was writing fast, so just hand it to me. Otherwise, I'll be embarrassed. Chelsea Kreitz. Chelsea. Now, is that her last name? Is it right? Yay! Yeah, Chelsea. <laughs> Wait, maybe go. I can just... Is she up in your in y'all's area? Can I just bring it with me? Nice. We'll save, if it fits in my suitcase, I can just bring it. We'll save $50 in shipping. <laughs> <laughs> I like saving Yay! money. I don't know if she's on here, but congratulations. Way to go, Chelsea. That's awesome. Cool. So that's exciting. So if, if you are in... I love who's making the face back there doing it. I want to give that person a high five right now. That's awesome. So uh, <laughs> just just let him know he's on record. He's going to be on YouTube tomorrow, and there'll be like thousands and thousands of views. Nice, fantastic. We had a neighbor playing on our back porch, and one of the girls came up to our back door and made a face at me, and so I did this back to her, and the neighbor girl couldn't believe that her mom would be goofy, I guess. So she's like, well, I want to see if she does this. So she came up to the door, and I looked back up from cooking, and she's there going like this, and like, I did it back. So now it's like her favorite thing, yeah. Austin's sister. Oh, really? She's like, that's so fun. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> it's a real pleasure. All right, guys. Well, we love you. We appreciate all of you. And uh, we are excited for what is to come. You know, we thank you for, for everyone on the journey. So. We're here, we're available, and if uh, I spoke to your heart tonight through that prayer, please message me or just let us know. All right, God bless. Talk to you soon. <laughs> and we're ending. <laughs>